This is the Friday Briefing. Many thanks for staying with us. Let's head down to the world of business. Former Kenjan CEO Edward Njoroge has been elected to head the International Organization of Standardization, also known as ISO, in a historic vote that sees the president of the global standard-setting body come from Africa for the first time. Edward Njoroge was elected during the 41st General Assembly meeting in Geneva, Switzerland. He will serve as the ISO president elect in 2019 and become ISO president effective January 2020 for a two-year term. Now, the Kakuma refugee camp is one of the largest humanitarian camps in sub-Saharan Africa, hosting thousands of vulnerable families. However, most of these families are struggling with energy problems, with most of them using firewood as a source of energy. But now private sector players within the camp are introducing solar-powered solutions that are powering schools, hospitals and ICT hubs that are now changing lives in the camps. Our reporter Philip Kitani visited the camp and tells us more. The Kakuma refugee camp in northern Kenya is home to 185,000 refugees from neighboring countries, including South Sudan, Somalia, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Burundi, Ethiopia, Uganda, and Rwanda. The camp is located in a marginalized region where only 2.7% of the population has access to electricity. This is according to the Kenya Off-Grid Solar Access Project 2015. Uh, this is a DFID uh, funded program that uh, seeks to provide uh, clean and sustainable energy uh, in, in displacement settings, in displacement and humanitarian settings. For schools, health centers, businesses and local facilities, Access to inexpensive and sustainable energy sources is also crucial, yet it is surely lacking. Now private sector players are working on lighting up the camp using solar. Those involved include Crown Agents, which has constructed a solar power ICT and learning hub equipped with low energy consuming computers, internet access, printers, photocopiers, and stationery. All of us, we are refugees who are running this organization, and we have that hope that to be a refugees, we can do something that can change the world. Uh, for the whole entire world, it is very important for the people to get the access of education uh, through technology, uh, also through uh, education on the academic side. Um, aside from uh, the power being uh, delivered to the clinics, uh, we've also supported uh, in uh, delivering uh, the power to the staff, the IRC staff quarters, as well as the neighboring uh, police posts. So there's, this is also to benefit the community, um, access these services, uh, whether it's security uh, or, uh, or, or, or so, uh, services that may be required from the, from the IRC staff. Cube Energy is also solarizing two health clinics managed by the International Rescue Committee, which, among other things, will offer psychological support to vulnerable groups, such as survivors of gender-based violence. Once completed, the clinics are expected to cut IRC diesel fuel consumption, an operation caused by 80%. So by solarizing these uh, clinics, we are helping them cut down their cost in terms of uh, diesel consumption, as well as to be able to provide uh, services for longer hours. The equipment, the, the vaccinations, and all the staffing would require that you have power all the time. All of these pioneering initiatives hope to inspire increased private sector participation in scaling up cost-effective and sustainable energy solutions while actively involving refugees and local communities in the adoption, distribution and maintenance of renewable energy products. Providing clean and sustainable energy in humanitarian setting has been a big challenge, but now Energy for Impact through the Moving Energy Initiative has come up with solar solutions that will benefit both the refugees as well as the host community in Kakuma. Philip Kaitang, KTN News. Standard Chartered Bank has today launched a digital school management system that will enable parents pay fees digitally and also track the progress of their children at school. The school management system will cost 75,000 shillings for the first year and 50,000 shillings in the subsequent years. 
you're able to monitor attendance, manage your HR, your finance, your transport, library, and hostel. These are just small modules, a small number of modules, because this system has 50 plus modules, and more are being increased as we speak. For us, it's not today, it is not tomorrow. It is about stabilizing. Stabilizing schools that have started small with very little and have reached somewhere and need upskilling. It is schools that don't need to die when the point of transition comes.